Would you like to understand a little more about how search algorithms work? That's this week on Think Tank Tuesday. Hi, this is Paul Potratz, and welcome to Think Tank Tuesday. So search algorithms can be really confusing. It can actually be trying to figure out why somebody's credit score is what it is and how do they get there. But search algorithms, let me explain actually the philosophy, the strategy of what Google, Yahoo, Bing, Facebook, what they're all doing right now. So as far as like my company, where we spend millions of dollars on search advertising for dealers across the country and Canada and all that good stuff, we're not really the customer. Well, who is the customer is me, is you, is an individual. So what I mean as far as the search engines are looking at a long-term gain versus a lot of companies, a lot of salespeople are focused on a short-term gain which receives a long-term loss. So what I'm really telling you is Google says, what can we do, as do the other search engines, what can we do to be the best search engine in the world? Well, if their ultimate goal is to be a great search engine, they've got to give great search. So when you sit down and search for something, their goal, their number one objective is to make sure that as far as the paid ad or the organic listing that shows in front of you is one that's specific to you. In other words, one that you are going to most likely click on. So they're not focused on who will pay more for search. They're focused on you and me as an individual. And what are we seeking? What are we really, truly looking for? Because the search engine that gives a quality search is going to keep you as a client, a long-term client. And by doing this, you're thinking, okay, well, how are they going to make money? If they're not focused on making money in paid ads, think about what's happening. The term big data, you've probably heard it a lot. And you're saying, what exactly is big data? This is big data. So by us searching and looking at things, we're showing a digital body language. We're showing a behavior of what's interesting to us and what we want. The search engines, therefore, want to show that information. So how does that transcend into other things? For example, have you ever searched for yourself? In other words, and when you're doing a paid search campaign and you search for your dealership or your company and your business and you're not coming up and then you pull up the phone and you're calling your account manager going, what's going on? Why is my ads not coming up? What's wrong here? And you think they're not doing their job? That's not always the case. The case can be, again, think about what I just told you, is your personal digital body language. Also, the IP address of that computer. Where has that computer been? So by what you're doing, you're showing a profile, your own digital profile. And Im imagine this. We all have a profile. It's like a digital fingerprint of what we're interested in. So in the past, let's say you searched for yourself, in other words, your company, and you've seen the ads. And then you went back a few days later, but of course you searched, you've seen the ads, and you didn't click. You went back a few days later, you did it again. You didn't click. You did it again. You didn't click. Well, the search engines are basically the ideal salesperson, and they're saying, well, I keep on talking to this person about this, but they're not clicking. So apparently it's not important to them. It's not interesting to them. So I'm going to quit talking to them about that. I'm just going to sit back and I'm gonna listen now, and I'm gonna see what this person's gonna tell me, and then I'm gonna to try to serve it to them. So really, the search engines are really, they're smarter than what we are, I guess you can say. At least that's what Google says, as far as let's create a search engine that's smarter than what that individual is, and let's start to create what's called a predictive profile. In other words, if the individual is interested in this, and now they move along, chances are now they're gonna be interested in this. So I'm gonna give you a case in point here on organic search. So let's assume for a moment, my past behavior, I've been searching for travel and tourism, I wanna to take a trip, you know, I wanna go out and have some fun and go somewhere exotic. So I'm searching, trying to find the ideal location. So I've shown a digital body language that I'm interested in travel and tourism. So now let's say that we sit down at the same time, we're on the phone and you're at your office, I'm at my office, and I say, okay, count of three, let's type in Egypt. One, two, three, Egypt. What I'm gonna see, again, in organic, and paid search is gonna be travel and tourism to Egypt. 
What you're going to see probably is going to be as far as the crisis and the turmoil that's going on in Egypt, the news of Egypt. I have a digital body language for travel and tourism, so there I get that ad. You don't have a digital body language for Egypt, and that's why they're going to try to figure out what's interesting to you and talk about that. Again, that's in paid search, and that's in organic. So let's take this one step farther. So Google has recently done an update, which by the way, Google changes its algorithms, in other words, so nobody can beat the system, every 17 and a half hours. So imagine if you're doing SEO and you're trying to keep up with that, mm, impossible. That's this week's tip. Tune in next week and we'll see you soon.